It was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer didn't think it was worth his while to spend much time with the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, good folks, he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? Who'll bid a dollar, a dollar and two, two dollars? Who'll make it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice. Going and going, but no. From the rear of the room, a white-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. He dusted the dust from the old violin, tightened its old loose strings, then played a melody so pure and sweet as a caroling angel sings. When the music ceased, the auctioneer, in a voice that was quiet and low, said, what am I bid for the old violin, as he held it up with the bow. I'll bid a thousand. I'll bid two, two thousand, who'll make it three, three thousand once, three thousand twice, going and gone, said he. The whole crowd cheered and some of them smiled, I don't quite understand, what changed its value, swift came the reply, the touch of a master's hand, and many a man whose life's out of tune, that's battered and scarred with sin, is auctioned cheap by the foolish crowd, much like the old violin. Then the master comes, and the foolish crowd may never quite understand the value of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of a master's hand. There's something about when a master comes on scene that makes everything a little bit different. There is. Take a simple task like fixing a sink. I can grab a wrench and snake a toilet, maybe clear a minor clog, but place the same problem in the hands of a master plumber and suddenly the entire plumbing system is cleared, flowing perfectly once again. Consider painting a room. I might manage to get some colors on the wall, but there might be streaks, missed spots, or even uneven coats. Now hand that paintbrush to a master painter. They transform the room, ensuring every stroke is perfect. The color is vibrant and even, bringing your space to life. In the garden, I might be able to plant seeds and hope for the best, but a master gardener knows the right soil, the perfect watering schedule, and how to nurture each plant to its full potential. The garden flourishes under their care, becoming a sanctuary of beauty and growth. There's something about when it's placed in the hands of a master, even with words. The difference is profound. I might be able to string together a sentence, but a master writer, they weave words into a tapestry of emotion, painting vivid images and evoking deep feelings with every line. There's something about a master, because in the master's hands, even the simplest things can become extraordinary. That's why it was so befitting when God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 18 and 2, Arise and go down to the potter's house. I need to show you what is possible when a master comes on the scene. I need to be able to show you what can happen when you put things in the hands of a master. You see, Israel was out of control, and God needed to show Jeremiah, if you once again allow me to be the master, I can make everything all right. So he tells him, arise. The first thing I need you to understand is if you're ever going to get from where you are to where you need to be, the first thing you have to do is arise. Complacency is the enemy to progress. And as long as you stay where you are, you're never going to get to where you need to be. So God told Jeremiah, arise and go down to the potter's house. There I will cause you to hear my words. Could it be possible the reason that you're not hearing God for your life is because you're not in a place where you can hear him for your life? God needed to separate Jeremiah to get him to a specific place where he could hear him and hear him clearly. This is the problem with a lot of us. We have so many voices in our heads. There's so much going on around us that we can't hear the voice we need to hear because of all the voices that are surrounding us. So he tells him, arise. Go down to the potter's house. It is there you will hear my word. 
So Jeremiah says he went to the potter's house and behold, he saw that the potter was rotting a work on the wheel. Now, I don't know if you know anything about pottery, but in order to create a masterpiece, you need clay. But not only do you need clay, you need water. Not only do you need water, you need sculpting tools. Not only do you need sculpting tools, but you need your hand. Uh huh. So when you have the pottery on the wheel, the potter's wheel, the old school ones have pedals. So while you're working, you got to consistently push those pedals. So the pottery wheel will go round and round in circles. Maybe the reason why it seems like your life is going round and round in circles is because you won't sit still so that God can finish the work on the wheel. So you got to consistently go round and round through cycle after cycle because the pottery isn't finished. The work that God is trying to bring forth in you isn't done. And it won't get done until you sit still and allow him to finish the work on the wheel. So not only is the pottery going around and around in circles, but you also have to add water to the clay to make it sculptable. Could it be that the reason that your life feels dry right now is because you haven't established a spiritual lubricant to keep you going? Uh huh. See, the water brings moisture to the clay to soften it up. Could it be the reason you're so bitter and angry and vengeful and spiteful is because you don't have a spiritual lubricant to soften you up so you're just dry and brittle see this video isn't gonna have a bunch of pretty pictures and videos because I'm not trying to entertain you I'm trying to help you we just had a former sitting president with an attempt to be assassinated because someone's life was dry and brittle we have young men unaliving women because their lives are dry and brittle Two young women just unalived a man, cut off his thumb to steal money out of his account because their lives were dry and brittle. We have an entire country that needs to take a trip to the potter's house so we can see what happens when we put the master back in his rightful place. So not only do you need lubrication, but the other thing that you need are tools. Because the clay needs to be shaped, it needs to be molded into the masterpiece that you see in your head. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So if we're ever going to realize the thoughts that he has towards us, we have to put him back in his place. His thoughts are of peace and not of evil. Too much evil going on in our country because the master isn't in his place. We need the master in a country that's founded on the belief and has it on our money. In God we trust. Where's God? Where do you see the hand of the master and what's going on right now? Sometimes when you're working on pottery, you have to take a knife and begin to carve clay away. But the carving isn't to hurt the clay. The carving is to create the clay into a masterpiece. Could it possibly be that a lot of the cutting away that you're feeling, cutting away of family, because family can be toxic, cutting away of friends, because friends are becoming frenemies, some of them enemies, cutting away of people, because they can't go with you to the next dimension. Could it possibly be that the cutting away is so that you're able to mount up with wings as an eagle? It's hard to fly when you got too much baggage attached to you. The other thing the knife is good for is grafting. Whenever the potter wants to add another piece to the clay, they have to take the knife and etch in cut marks. Add lubrication in order to attach another piece. Could it be some of the cutting that you're feeling? Be so that God can place a handle on your life. Because a lot of us don't have a handle. We don't have a grip. We don't have anything to hold on to. We don't have any coping skills and we don't have any staying power. We're consistently running. Could it be that God is trying to place a handle on our lives so that he can easily grab a hold of us when we start going wrong? That's why you need a master. Verse 4 says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. Do you know what marred means? Marred means defective. It means impaired. It means disfigured. 
But remember, it's in the hands of the potter. And the scripture goes on to say, so he made it again another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make it. So when he saw the pottery was disfigured, he didn't throw it in the trash like we do each other. He took it, added lubrication to it, broke it down, and created it again. The same clay, disfigured. The same clay, imperfect. The same clay. See, that's what a master does. A master understands you don't have to throw things away just because it's broken. Because br even broken things can become a masterpiece. And that's what I'm here to tell you today. In life, we often encounter brokenness, broken dreams, broken relationships, broken hearts. It's easy to feel that these fragments are worthless, that they have no place in the masterpiece of our lives. But remember, even broken things can become a masterpiece. In the hands of a master, every piece, every shard, every fragment holds potential. The master sees beyond the cracks and breaks, envisioning the beauty that can emerge from the brokenness. Just as a master craftsman turns a shattered vase into a stunning mosaic, the master of our lives takes our broken pieces and creates something even more extraordinary. Your brokenness is not the end of your story. It's the beginning of a new chapter, a chance for transformation. What seems worthless in your eyes is of infinite worth in the eyes of a master. Trust in the process. Embrace the brokenness. For it is through these cracks that light enters and true beauty emerges. In the hands of the master, you are never worthless. You are a masterpiece in the making. Let your heart be filled with hope and faith. Even the most broken things can become masterpieces. You are a designer's original. When it comes to the potter and the clay, no two pieces are alike. You may be from the same clay, but you cut from a different mold. A mold designed and crafted with love and purpose specifically for you. So lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. And know that no matter what you're going through, the master is waiting to take the broken fragments of your life and turn them into a vessel fit for the master's use. Thank you for tuning in to Solstice Sundays. Until next time, the sun is up. The master is waiting. Don't you think it's time you tell him what you need so he can make you what he needs? He's waiting. Are you ready?